Hi there, this is Bob Martin with the Nautilus Dry Docks and RCSub.com. Today I wanted to share with you a fun little project. It's an ROV. This is the second one that I've built. Uh, I call it the, the Mark II. Now this was actually a commission project uh, for a researcher uh, researching the marine biology uh, of Alaska. So this will actually be patrolling the waters underneath the ice and one of the de design constraints uh, that I was faced with was that the unit needed to fill uh, or sorry fit down a 12 inch diameter hole in the ice and that's why it's uh, it's built in a very compact manner to allow it to uh, head down there. Basically uh, the construction of the unit is mostly PVC tubing off the shelf parts uh, as well as Rule uh, 1100 GPH bilge pumps, again off the shelf parts and basically everything was just glued and or bolted together. Flotation unit on the top is just uh, styrofoam, builder styrofoam that you can get at the hardware store. I glued it together, uh, painted it to make it look a little bit better and it's just bolted on there. I got a, a heavy duty silicone uh, high flexibility power tether. Uh, power and control tether. Uh, it's anchored quite securely. You can actually pick the unit up without uh, worry about it coming disengaged from the unit and pull it back in case of catastrophic failure. The control box is actually uh, a Tupperware container for all intents and purposes. Um, it's very actually quite easy to use, very intuitive. You've got left and right thrusters as well as up and down and then you've got your main power switch. I'm using a 12 volt <coughs> Uh, nickel metal hydride battery. I just had it on the shelf. Car battery works perfectly well, or a little tractor battery. And then the neat thing is that this was actually designed to work with the AquaView marine camera system. Uh, haven't modified this at all. Um, and basically, the way that this is going to work is uh, the little fishy here <clears throat> bolts in with the existing hardware that comes with the AquaView. The mount actually allows for variable angles so that you can set it to view upwards, um, downwards, or, or however you want it set. Uh, this also comes with um, built-in LED lighting, um, which of course helps in, in the low lighting situations. Um, basically, it just clips in there like that. And then you can see, or maybe you can't, in the back there, there's just a thumb screw. And you adjust that to set your angle. So that's it right there. Um, this is actually the first time I will have dropped it in a pool. I've done a little bit of flotation tests to see. Um, one of the challenges that I'm going to have is that I'm testing it in a freshwater pool. Uh, of course, it's going to be operating in salt water. So when I send this to my customer, I'll be sending along some flotation and some weight so that he can play around with the buoyancy so that it uh, is basically um, set so that it is very slightly negatively buoyant. It'll settle down uh, onto the uh, surface of the, of the uh, ground underneath the water. Shouldn't raise up any disturbance in terms of silt or, or disturb the marine life. Um, and then it basically uses the, uh, the jets here to hop from place to place if it needs to get moved, but uh, we'll see if that actually works. Okay, we have dropped our little ROV in the swimming pool. You can see it settled nicely on the bottom now. What I've actually done is I've taken some of this foam pipe insulation, cut it up into little five inch strips, and I've used some zap straps to secure them to the uh, hose. Now this has some nice friction so these don't move around at all. Um, but it does actually allow you to slip it uh, by hand and adjust it. And the idea is to make this as neutrally buoyant as possible so that it's not affecting uh, the, the positive buoyancy or the negative buoyancy of the uh, actual ROV. Now, you can see the tether for the video camera running to the, the unit there separate. Of course, if we were running this uh, in actual operation, it would all be tethered together. Uh, and held in place with those app straps. But uh, actually my customer has his own AquaView unit. He told me about it. I thought it was so cool, I got one for myself, so he can't have this, he has to use his own. 
Um, but it's it's all set up. Uh, it's the the cord is basically neutrally buoyant, or as, as close as we'll probably get here, just for testing purposes. Um, we got that thing in the bottom of the pool. Now I think what I'm going to do is I'll take a little bit of uh, video of it from the surface so you can see it working and then uh, I'll pop the camera into the waterproof enclosure and try and get some underwater video. All right, here we go. I'm going to do the best we can. Um, got the ROV. I'm going to drop it into the water. I'm actually going to shake it out and get all these air bubbles out of it. <clears throat> now you can see when I let this go, what it's going to do is it's just going to slowly settle down to the bottom. And again, you know, part of my logic or my reasoning was that this is for uh, a research project. Uh, I don't want to stir up the sediment on the, on the bottom uh, of the ocean where it's going to be operating. I don't want to disturb the, you know, the, the, the wildlife down there. But to move it, basically, what I'm going to do, and I'm going to try and shoot video and operate it at the same time, so I apologize if this isn't uh, exactly natural. So I'm just going to engage the vertical thrusters here. You can see the unit lifting up nice and gently all the way up. And then I'll release it and it's going to settle back down. So to move it around, just give it a little bit of, you know, vertical thrust. And then you can engage your left thrusters, your right thrusters. And that's how she moves around underneath the water. Now, you will get more thrust if you take the bilge pumps apart and attach propeller to the output shaft. Uh, the reason I went with this was for uh, ease of maintenance and, and for spares. To, to swap out the propellers if there's ever a catastrophic failure of one of the bilge pumps uh, would take time. Um, so we lose a little bit of efficiency in regards to propulsion thrust However, uh, to, to swap out a unit, if it were ever to go bad, would literally take five minutes. Uh, just unclipping the old one, uh, clipping the new one back in. So that's the reason that we went for it. If you're after thrust, you can definitely use a propeller. Of course, you're going to want to shroud it to make sure you don't suck in weeds or that sort of a thing. Uh, with the pump system, it's got filters in place uh, and screens so that you don't suck up weeds uh, or small mammals as you... Um, patrol around underneath there and, and on, honestly for this purpose it's probably more than sufficient so let's see if we can get some underwater video for you